Professor in the entomology department at A&M University in Texas, Mickey Eubanks is a fire ant specialist. He has studied them for over 30 years. Red imported fire ants are incredibly successful invaders for a number of reasons. And one of the reasons that they're so successful invading new territories is that they're very adapted to disturbance. Um, for example, they can really handle flooding really well. So they, in their native habitats, um, they live in these, these flood plains that are prone to very severe flooding. And we see that here in the United States where they can um, withstand flooding by forming these living rafts um, that allow a large percentage of the colony to survive in the water for a long time. You can see the, the workers are amazingly strong when I lift up with my forceps. You know, they'll, they'll produce these strings of, of workers that are just connected to each other. So they have very powerful mandibles and legs to make this happen. Fire ants use their mandibles to cling to each other. This multifunctional tool is as powerful as a hydraulic jack. Workers hang on to one another, locking their mandibles and constructing a safety raft whose links are so tight the raft is water resistant. Now some of the workers that are forming this living raft, they're not gonna be alive the whole time. They're gonna, they're gonna sacrifice themselves. And they're willing to sacrifice for their sisters and um, they're really willing to do this because of this unique genetic system that they have called haplodiploidy. In a haplodiploid system, unfertilized eggs hatch to reveal males who are the worker ants. Fertilized eggs release females, the queen ants. As a result, a male carries only half as many genes as a female. Since evolution is based on the transmission of any given species' genes to the next generation, for the fire ants, it's preferable that the males, the workers, sacrifice themselves. And that's what's happening here. They're, they're actually, you know, give their lives to prevent the rest of the colony from drowning. Mickey Eubanks travels the world over to study fire ants. But it is on this lake that he leads his daily research on the surprising capacity of adaptation of this uncommon insect. Oh, I see fire ants climbing up this dead tree. That might mean there's a raft that has touched the tree and now they're coming off the water. The raft is constructed in a few minutes. It floats because fire ants are hydrophobic. The chitin, which envelops the ant's body and protects it, is waterproof. The water ripples against the surface without entering the body. made up of thousands of fire ant workers. Um, thousands of them are forming the basal layer that's on top of the water. And then on top of that layer will be hundreds or thousands of additional fire ants. Many of them will be carrying the larvae or the babies of the colony. They use those strong mandibles, their strong legs to really hold on to each other. When Mickey lightly pushes down on the raft, it doesn't sink. The very high density of the ants linked together ensures its cohesion. As such, a colony can float hundreds of kilometers on any type of water. No matter how long you study these fire ants, they never cease to amaze you and they're just so impressive. 
And then you can see some of the larvae, though, unfortunately for them, get used as sort of like life rafts. So this raft will stay together until they, it um, touches some emergent aquatic vegetation or something like this dead tree that, that we see here. And as soon as the raft comes in contact with the dead wood or the vegetation, um, the, the workers are just going to start scrambling up out of the water. And many of them, again, will be taking these larvae or the babies of the colony up the vegetation or up this dead tree to escape uh, from drowning. That's their priority at this point, is to save the babies um, from drowning. Very efficient, very effective. Whoop, whoop. We don't want to get too close to the tree or they'll start coming in the kayak. If the raft drifts for too long, the workers are forced to eat some of the larvae and eggs to avoid starvation. When the raft lands, the ants get off and find their way to dry land. The colony is safe. The fire ants, who have avoided drowning and survived famine, now look for new territory.